Aquatech, Solar Tech, and Laser Tech battle with evil. Megatech, Terror Tech, and Doom Tech, the interchangeable robotic villains. Man Tech, adventure beyond the human experience. Welcome back to Retro Wednesday. It's Tigerium Hanger. This is Mike. And today I want to talk to you about Remco's Man Tech. Now, this toy line is from the mid 80s and Although it may look like it's targeting a younger audience, it has a lot of really advanced concepts that aren't fully realized in toy lines today. So today I'm going to talk to you about the Remco Mantec. This is the complete and entire collection. We're going to get into this. Coming up. Okay, we're going to start out looking at the figures. There's only six figures, two vehicles, and one playset in here. So, starting out looking at the figures, as you can see, we have three good guys on the left, three bad guys on the right. Everyone has different pieces. So, whether it's the lower leg, the middle leg, the torso, the arms, the hands, the heads, they're all unique per figure. And some of the weapons are reused with the vehicles in the playset, but they all have their own unique weapons. Starting off, let's have a quick look at a size comparison. This is in humanoids right here, and then a Centurion figure, as you can see the somewhat similarity between the toy lines and concepts. They do use similar concepts on some of these toy lines in here, but this one, I think, came before all of them. Here's how he scales next to a G.I. Joe Classified. So he is six inch, he fits into the six inch toy line, so that looks pretty good, but he is a bit bulkier, and. As you could say, these are more advanced type of concept than this. This looks uh, simple and bulky, but you could also say they're wearing some sort of an armor, I guess. So starting out, the first one we're going to look at is called Solar Tech. He is the yellow one. I call him Yellow Guy, but his real name is Solar Tech. So he looks pretty interesting overall. Now he does come with a backpack and two guns. Now they all come with some sort of a backpack a bigger gun, which this is his bigger gun, and then a smaller gun with, for him, it's a harpoon. Some of the backpacks don't want to stay on, and these are all pretty old figures. Now, I do want to say I noticed that it's kind of cool that if you move his arms, because you can plug his guns in here, you can move that, and it kind of looks a little bit better, in my opinion. That's kind of cool the way it is, but you can plug it into multiple different places. You can plug it into the chest, and it does come with an extender. I think every figure comes with one of these extenders, but I'm not 100% sure if every figure has that because some, a lot of people say that theirs is complete, but they don't have the extender, and there's a lot of pictures that show as complete figures without extenders. But anyway, uh, the left hand seems to be able to grip a weapon, sort of. Uh, some of the weapons are too heavy and they fall out. This is a purely open hand on the right hand for all of them. So it's it's interesting how they kept that design going, even though each one of the forearms are different. They are all unique. So looking pretty good. Here he is from the back. And there's not a ridiculous amount of articulation. Just uh, one, two, three, four, five. I'd say it's five points of articulation, but these move and then these move. So uh, there's, there's actually more articulation in this than it looks because you can move these and all that kind of stuff. But really, it would have been nice if the arms would go out a little more. Maybe some give to it. And I'm not going to do this with all of them, but here he has broken down all his components with the torso, the upper arm, the lower arms, the upper legs and lower legs, and then all of the pieces and the helmet and all that kind of stuff. So putting this back together, they do call this something along the lines of posi click system. In other words, you can just kind of plug stuff in and out. So they had some cool name, a gimmicky name for it. Now, they do have helmets. I don't think they look very good with their helmets. I think the helmets are seriously too oversized for the figure, and I don't really like the way they look. I think they display better with the helmets off, but they are kind of cool. You can barely see the eyes in there, and it's just it just seems so huge. But they are cool, and there's a ton of detail, and they're all different. And then, of course, you could plug one of the accessories on top of the helmet, and that kind of stuff works out. Let's go check out the next one. So the next one on the list is... Solar Tech, no, Solar Tech? Yeah. So Solar Tech here is the red guy. I call him red guy. Uh, I don't really keep all the names straight, but he does look pretty cool. And it is kind of interesting with all the different colors. It does make for a more interesting toy line. And so he's red. He's got the red body parts and he has the red helmet, which uh, goes on. I just don't think the helmet looks that great either, but uh, it's actually hard to get on his head. And a lot of times when you take the helmet off, you're going to pop the head off. And I think this is one of the figures that does that. 
but it, it's still got a lot of detail. It's interesting, but I think it really makes the proportions way off. It kind of makes it look like a real kitty toy line. If you leave the helmets off, it looks a little bit more advanced and mature. So that's kind of why I'm going to display most of mine with the helmets off. And also it takes the paint off the hair when you pull that stinking helmet off there. So probably won't be putting helmets on the rest of them. But anyhow, this guy here is a little bit different. As you can see, he has different arms, forearms, legs, and all that kind of stuff. He has a small gun. So the small gun on the first guy, the Aquatech, was a harpoon. This one is just, I, I don't know, this is a small little pistol. Could be like a hand pistol or something along those lines. And over here we have a triple laser gun. So that's kind of cool. His backpack is one that it can actually plug in. So you can plug something into that backpack. You can plug his extender into the backpack. And then you can have... My extender doesn't fit. Now, a lot of my extenders don't fit well. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking these those were like the most heavily played with piece or something. Anyhow, something like that. That's kind of cool. One thing you're going to notice is kind of the swirly color to the silvers. And I noticed that with this guy more than the rest of them. But there are some other ones with silver parts on them that I don't see this as much. But yeah, we have the breakdown in the gold and the uh, silver plastic from back in the day. Now, the feet and the legs look pretty good. I don't see, well, there's actually some on the feet right there. So one of the things with a 1984 toy line, you're gonna get this kind of stuff. You're gonna get that kind of swirly plastic going on. He does have some paint apps right here, which as you can tell, doesn't really match the rest of him. It's a silver paint versus what they dyed. And so it's over time, it's not going to match. But it's still kind of cool that they did uh, a, a couple of paint apps there. And I do believe that this is painted on also. So this is painted and that is painted. But uh, pretty cool overall. And one of the reasons they can get the color break up and not have to paint it so much is because all the parts clip together. And so we have red and silver and black, all these color break up in the head, less paint because each part's dyed itself. So that's kind of a cool idea too. All right, so here is Laser Tech and this dude is kind of bald. Does kind of look interesting, cool. Now the thing about him, I call him Blue Guy. And he has the... This helmet, actually, you can see his face in it a lot more because it's... All right, I guess put it on there. Because it's so open and big. So this still a big, giant, bulky helmet, and it does still set the proportions off, but you can still see his face a little bit better. So feels more like a human. And he does have his paint app right here. And, and come to think of it and to look at it, Aquatech had a paint app on his chest. Also, I didn't point out. So they, they get the, the two paint apps, the chest and the waist piece, I guess, and those must have to match so anyway uh this guy comes with this double massive big gun that's his big gun it's a double barreled laser and then over here he's got i don't know what you call that like a, a, a either a harpoon looking thing or maybe it's a rifle still looks kind of cool kind of interesting overall and then his backpack doesn't seem to do much but you see there's a hole on his backpack so if you wanted to uh you could clip this onto his backpack and have it like that. Maybe it's extra storage or he can shoot upward or something along those lines. And of course there's this extending piece. And so he does have, again, different upper arms, different uh, hands pieces, and his hands have molded in lasers. So those aren't removable. And so stuff like that, that's molded into it. So there's a, dr a great amount of detail that was put into these figures. And you know, I think in 1984 and thinking, this is a little kid's toy line, maybe, or maybe they were shooting for some like eight, nine, 10 year olds or something, but still, it's pretty cool. Uh, I bet you one point in time he had eyebrows or something, but maybe mine's worn off. Yep, so anyway, this is Laser Tech and he's got some lasers all over him. All right, so our next victim is going to be Green Guy. They call him Doom Tech. I call him Green Guy and let's move these helmets out of the way. He only has the green helmet, so. Here is Doom Tech. Now, one thing about this is that he comes with one of, I think, the coolest weapons. And this weapon over here is, uh, it's like, it's got two additional small weapons. They plug in and then they can uh, plug in or pull off and you can take it off. You can put it in his hand as like a soul little blaster or something along those lines. And uh, did I mention balance? It's a little hard to balance these figures sometimes because of this design. Anyway. Uh, they have giant feet, so that's helpful. But yeah, you can put that in his hand. That is pretty cool. It's like uh, he's got a whole lot of extra little accessories added on there versus some of the other ones. So 
pretty cool or it gives it articulation if you want to look at it like that i don't think it was really intended to be unplugged but maybe it was uh here he is with his big weapon see and that was just a small way big weapon now i see this recolored into a bunch of different colors on the ships and play set and all that kind of stuff but i think they all are but this one here seems to be the most common i run into but still pretty cool now these bad guys are cyborgs and they've got some like cyborg computer chip stuff in the back of their head which is pretty cool uh, looks pretty interesting. Here, here is his backpack. Now, there's something about this backpack that I don't understand. There's like a notch in here. Almost like you could plug something or slot something into that. So I don't know what that is. I don't think that's just a design. That looks like it's functional. And then, of course, you can plug maybe this into here. Now, I start to worry about this. Like, these are already worn. They were all used when I got them. And so uh, some of the ports don't hold as well as others. I kind of feel like the more I plug and unplug, the harder it's going to be to get these things to stay in. I'll have to be using that that trick. The trick with the polish and let the polish dry and then plug, plug them in. But uh, looking at him, he does have the paint app here, a paint out here, and he has the different uh, look right here. It looks like he's got like wings or something to kind of fly away. And uh, and his forearms, he looks almost, it almost looks like he's kind of got a fish going on right there. But yeah, that's Doom Tech. I think he's the leader. I think he's the boss. I'm not sure. Here's his helmet, and I think I'm, I'm not going to be plugging these helmets in because they just uh, mess up the heads so much. And there's so much paint on the head, too. There's all that silver paint on the back, the cyborg head. And then it makes them come off, makes the heads pop off, but yeah. Pretty pretty decent looking one. Uh, so much detail. Next up, we got Purple Guy, and Purple Guy is, they call him Negatech, because uh, he's not very positive. He has something negative to say to everybody. Did you do the dishes? They didn't do them very well. They're not very clean. Okay, so I have an extra one of these guns. Actually, I think I have an extra of a lot of the guns, but I just kind of put an extra one on there just for fun. So that's his big gun. Uh, he only comes... Oh, yeah, and then an extra small one, I guess I had. Now, here's the thing. I don't have a second one of him. A lot of them I have duplicates because that's just the way they came in lots, and so I can double up on some of the accessories. But with for some reason for this guy and then the next one, I don't have any duplicates at all. So, uh, but, but I think these are the coolest looking ones. I really like the color purple. Uh, the backpack is, is another one of those cool ones where you can plug it in on the top. And then uh, these little small guns. So the small gun, the big gun, the backpack, uh, paint on the head. And that paint actually is pretty good on this one. A lot of that silver gets rubbed off real easy. And then he's got the black paint app here and here. And then, of course, there's this little uh, extension piece. So I kind of like that. Here is his helmet, which I told you I'm not going to be putting them on anymore for the re remainder of these because of all of that paint that's on the head. It, it rubs it all off. It pops the head off. And uh, we kind of see what they look like with their helmet on. I don't, I think they're just too big. I wish there was a way to have made them smaller helmets or, you know, you know, this day and age, they would just be swappable. You have two swappable heads. Costs would have been cheaper to make two swappable heads, I think. But anyway, maybe, maybe, maybe that's not something that they were thinking about. Maybe they were behind the times back then. But anyway, Pretty cool looking guy, Negatech. Uh, I'm gonna come to him for some advice if I get some haters. <laughs> so next up we have this guy here who's black and silver deco and they like to call this guy Terror Tech. He's Terror. I think he looks really cool. Now uh, his head uh, doesn't seem to look like a flesh tone color. It's so light that my, here let's uh, block some of that light. The light is just making it super washed out, but uh, kind of cool looking and uh, the paint on the back there. He does have this backpack and you can put one of his uh, pieces in there. He does have like a mesh, like all over him. He's kind of a mesh. My paint's a mess, but uh, yeah, he's got kind of a mesh grid pattern to him, which is interesting. Looks like he's got some speakers so he can jam out like, and then uh, his small, oh, okay, this is his big weapon and it's a little bent. Some of these warp, especially in heat. This heat during shipping could warp these. But uh, I don't know. Maybe I can heat them up and warp them back. I haven't tried yet. I keep thinking, yeah, I want to do that, but I don't. Uh, this is a spear gun. So he's got two relatively large weapons. He's supposed to have a, a large one and a small one. I guess the spear gun is a small weapon. Uh, there's his hands. He does have some stuff going on with his hands right there. And his feet. Now, some of these don't have really a tight connection. And so that's a, that's a bit of a problem for posability and... Uh, them standing but when you get to the play set i'll show you why i don't have much trouble standing them in the play sets and i don't have any trouble standing them in their vehicles yes i said standing them in the vehicles but this one here here's his helmet a uh, pretty cool looking guy 
overall. His helmet actually is the smallest of all of them. And all right, I'm gonna go ahead and do it. It looks the best on him, to tell you the truth. It still breaks the, it breaks up the overall uh, sculpt. Look how tight that is. But uh, it's the smallest one. I think it looks the best. This one is Terror Tech. Before I move on to the vehicles of the playset, you're probably thinking the fun of this toy line is the swap ability factor. So if you're a super ultra continuity buff, then you're gonna really get mad because I'm mixing a good guy with a bad guy, but I'm gonna mix green and blue and we're going to pop. Oh, these are my spares. Oh, I don't like, uh, it feels like I'm gonna break them. Uh, back in the day, I'm pretty sure when the plastic was newer, there was less chance to break. I do have a few broken pieces, so I know they do break. So I am being pretty ultra careful with them. And uh, even in the instructions, it says if it, it should go in easy and don't push too hard or you will break it. So I agree with that entirely. So I am being super ultra careful with them. And now that I'm doing, I'm probably just going to leave these like this because these are spares. And this is what the toy line's about. It's about being able to mix and match and do whatever you want. They showed some weird stuff in a commercial. But there it is. So they're mixed and matched. Uh, it doesn't make sense because it's good guys and bad guys working together or making different parts. I mean, you, you could be way more creative. I'm definitely not creative enough to do too much with these guys, especially because I don't break them. So they went pretty cheap on the packaging. The figures for the good guys all had the same outside packaging. Then they had a sticker with their name and the different color background on the inside. Same thing with the bad guys. They all have the same uh, packaging with a different color sticker, different color background on the inside. So saving the money on the packaging is, I guess, one of the things they did to roll into this toy line. Now it looks like they did have some more figures planned for this series uh there's one that seemed to have like an extra set of arms one that has some wings on it something like that so still it's pretty cool they could have done more with this toy line i just don't think it was popular enough because heck i didn't even know about it back in the day it wasn't popular enough for them to make a whole lot more but that's good for me i only have six figures at the play set and two vehicles to track down to say i got a complete collection i love those toy lines but somewhere inside me i wish there was a few more figures to go to go after Next up, we're going to get into the vehicles. This is the Traxxon, and it is right here. It has like a launch pad. It is plugged into the playset. It's compatible with the playset, which is really cool. And you just don't see this very often, that you have docking ports in playsets. We see this. It's going to be something coming up with the Eternia and that kind of stuff. They're pre-planning that with the Masters of the Universe line, which is pretty cool. Looking at the Traxxon vehicle, it is something that really surprised me. It's big. When I first got this, I see it in pictures and online and all that kind of stuff. And you're thinking, well, you know, this is, uh, it's not that big. You know, I was actually thinking it's like a mini rig kind of size, just scaled up because the figures are scaled up. But this is way bigger than like a scaled up Star Wars mini rig. This is just huge. Uh, I was shocked. I was a bit surprised. I think this other orange one can go here. Uh, we put the orange one there. So, uh, and then docking it, you kind of have to kind of move the way you have all of these. I am going to keep this guy docked for display because I think that is such a really cool feature. So this thing does have some stickers. Mine are not in the greatest shape. I would like to have upgrade to the stickers, but seeing as how this is such a small obscure toy line, nobody's making stickers for this. So, uh, too bad, I guess. It's got to deal with the, whatever you got. You get what you get, right? You don't throw a fit, so. But I do like how you have right here a pretty cool looking uh, computer panel and that kind of stuff. I mean, yeah, they're just sticker detail. Uh, in the instructions, it actually says it's a boat. Vehicle includes command module for use in the water, left and right wings, transport system wheels, uh, rear jet thruster, laser, borer and launcher. That's what that is, that's a borer. We'll get to that. Two piece forward cannons, uh, six beta weapons, and a decal sheet, which I don't have a decal sheet I already put on there. So it's still pretty cool uh, overall. And the ship itself, uh, they're, they're actually getting easier to find. I think they were harder to find for a while. Uh, I think everything was hard to find for a while, but now it's getting a little easier on some stuff. So here we go with my combination, good guy, bad guy. And he actually, this is blue guy with red guy's head and green guy legs. So. There are pegs in here to peg him in so he can stand, which it looks like, it just looks cooler when they stand. So much cooler when they stand, because you can see the figure and all that kind of stuff. Now, if you go to sit him in there, which I'm gonna kind of take that off. You go to sit him in there, 
Hey, look at that posi click system there. And then you put the gun on there. You don't really see him so well. Like, how does he see where he's going? Uh, I don't know. But you could have him sit down. I think that this one here, I have him sitting down when he's in the launching mode because he'd probably fall out if he's in the standing mode. And in the other one, I'll leave in the standing mode. But still, pretty cool vehicle overall. Let's take a look at the bad guy one. It's purple. But before we do that, I can never get this to work. This little gun here. I can never get this to work. Uh, see, it all does is spin. It doesn't shoot off. I remember these when I was a kid, and I thought, these just don't work. But that's how they, that's how they allegedly operate. I never could get them to shoot off and do anything. They just kind of spin and fall off. It's, I never liked that. I wish it would have just been a spring and shoot. But then again, uh, they probably would have been lost, right? Next up, we have the purple bad guy one. It's called the... What's it called again? I can't remember what it's called. It's called the Oh Terrorizer. It's the Terrorizer. Now again, I've got really bad stickers. I did the best I could to kind of try to repair them and tape them back on and make them look halfway decent. So anyhow, uh, with that, this is a really cool looking vehicle. It's the exact same base, but it upgraded. It has a different nose cone, different wings, uh, pretty much the exact same one of these but the tip's different. It's like a jagged instead of more of a swirly one like the other one. Well, the other one isn't swirly either, but it's just a different tip on that one there. But uh, I think all the guns are still the same and they still utilize it. Like that one's pretty familiar. This gun is the same as that gun. It's just a different color. So, and it's solid on the top, but there's a hole here and this is solid on top. So slightly different in the guns. Uh, looking at the back here, uh, there's not really any lights. Like you would like stop lights and stuff in the back. I, mean, I guess you don't need that on your ships or something, but uh, still pretty cool looking overall. Uh, yeah, this I love this purple color scheme. I didn't try to throw it in the pool and see if it floated or anything like that, but I see like uh, opening right here, which might make it not want to float, but it says it's for use as a boat or in water. So I don't know. Anyway, pretty cool overall. Let's see if I can get this stupid thing to spin. Oh, I think I broke it. That's all it does. So underwhelming in my opinion, but uh, yeah, this is a really cool vehicle. I like the way it looks, pretty slick overall. Here's the box, the terrorizer. Again, this is a big old box. Uh, this is pretty cool looking. It does show you everything, but like I'm gonna point out in probably all the packaging that there's multiple different color guns that actually come with it. They only show silver on the box, on the packaging. So that's kind of crazy in my opinion, just the way they went about doing all of that and the prototype. And we see this with other toy lines, but it's very prevalent here, but it shows you just a little bit, kind of the wings fold up, which I never really do. I don't mess with that function, if that is a function. And I just like to keep the wings down. I feel like I'm gonna break this thing if I do too much with it, but it, it looks pretty cool. It's pretty fun overall. Here is the back of the box, and there is uh, the other vehicle, the playset, and the six figures showing you the cross cell for everything. And over here, we see the six millimeter posi click system, which we talk about just a little bit in this video, but uh, they talk about it on all of their packaging. So, lastly, we have the playset, which is very awesome. I love this playset, I think it's fantastic. I love reviewing playsets, of course, but with this, I do want to say that uh, there is so much more you could do with this and it could integrate into other toy lines and all of that. But let's just look at all the functions and features of it and let's pan scan it and then do close up. So right here, it's a, it's on a base and uh, that's the base that comes with it. Why it's on a post is because the whole thing rotates like it's rotating. Over here is the launching pad and you can also, it's just tons of stickers on this guy all over the place. But let's start looking at this closer up. Okay, so I have this loaded with figures, and as you can see, there's detail writing here, and uh, there are, I think, about 30 foot pegs, and let's see if I can get up there and show you, yeah. There's the foot peg right back there. I've got figures plugged into foot pegs. Uh, there are openings here, so you can just plug stuff in. You can plug this in right here if you want to. You got these clear pieces. The clear transparent blue pieces are so cool. But instead of that, if you want, you can just put a gun right there. Uh, that's something that you can do. Or, of course, I like these. I like these tall ones. There's just so much going on with them. Feels a lot like a like Superman, kind of his cave there. Uh, this, these are stackable. So if you wanted to put three of them 
up in one spot you can and also use as like a screen for the gun we'll see at the top the turret up top there's uh stickers everywhere security uh another control panel back there and i kind of divided it good guys on one side bad guys on the other uh it could be like the bad guys are invading uh, you can set it up however you want and then as your as the it turns well you kind of see in the back because they're all looking forward but uh, you might want to put one manning a certain device or anything but i like that it rotates it's it's rotate kind of like it's on its own axis it's out in space and rotating you kind of see a, a space station out there rotating around like this uh, trying to uh when it rotates in space it's my thought that they do that to kind of generate some sort of a gravitational field or give you some sense of gravity through centrifugal force but uh, I, I might be completely wrong because i haven't looked into that at all it's always just been my theory but yeah pretty cool let's look at the next top sorry about all this uh i got blue guy right here manning this gun now this gun here is pretty cool uh, they come with turret guns and you could put them down below if you want i just thought it looked cooler up top like uh, really defending the base and this is cool that you can plug in this blue thing and uh, one-handed i don't like messing with any of this stuff one-handed but uh because it's so some of it's pretty fragile and you i could see it breaking but uh, kind of cool up here. There are no foot pegs in the top piece and the way it's constructed is these are slid in and then that's this piece is on the top There's three of these supports that support that and not a whole lot can go on up here But you can make it kind of cool and it just does look it adds to the overall look of this thing to make it look pretty cool So this place that would be kind of cool to have some centurions on it Probably not the original Kenner, but you could still make them work on the outside and the top. I mean, there's ways you could make the Kenner ones work. The KO Crystal came fits in there really well. And the 80s Commanders from Ramen Toy would fit. There's the old mascot of the homemade Zartan. And so G.I. Joe Classified would fit. It would be a great G.I. Joe Classified display also. So very versatile. A whole lot you could do with this playset. Here is the box for the Battle Station 2 playset. So the picture is so interesting because they use, when they make these, they use prototypes. And look how they had purple in there. That's not fading of the picture. That is a prototype. I see a lot of pictures online of different color stuff for this toy line because of the prototypes. And when they come out, as you can see, they show all of their weapons being black or silver. But we know in reality, those weapons are all multi-different colors and stuff like that pretty cool over here we can see that it's a launching pad which actually that's how i knew it was a launching pad by looking at the box i might have missed that whole point and wondered what that was for and then up here just kind of show you some ways that you can set it up and then shows you that this is actually supposed to be a weapon storage which i don't use it for weapon storage but uh i guess i could if i wanted to in the future the box has line art drawing on it kind of cool uh kind of reminiscent of what we saw back in the day but it really does show you it's the entire toy line right here we have the two vehicles, the six figures, and the playset. Lots of fun. So this is my look at the Man Tech toy line. The entire toy line, there are only six figures, two vehicles, and a playset. It's very cool. Uh, interesting concepts that they utilized with making this toy line and these figures back in the day. And I, kinda, I think I kind of pointed all of those out, but it's still a very nice looking set when you have it all together. When you have all the figures and complete on the playset with the vehicles, it looks pretty good. But I'm curious about you. Have you heard about this before? Do you have any of these? Did you have any of these as a kid? Or is this the first time you've ever heard of Bantech? And what do you think about it? If this is the first time you've seen this line, what do you think about it? Let me know in the comments below. Like, subscribe, turn to your manger out. You can create your own robot warriors, limited only by your imagination.